I don't, I don't really think it has had much of an impact, those Hollywood stories. Um, 10 years later, we still have no federal hate crimes law. Um, when Araujo was murdered here in the Bay Area in 2002, and that received widespread news coverage, both in the mainstream papers and our papers and local television, and there have been a couple television movies about that case that I don't really think has led anywhere. We had Lawrence King, as Jim mentioned. We've just had a, been covering a suspicious transgender death up in Sacramento the last couple weeks of a, a young immigrant person found dead in the river. So I don't, I don't really think so. I, you know, you still have the Fred Phelps people coming out to protest the funerals. The one thing that, that Matthew Shepard's death did um, benefit, I guess, future deaths is that when they had the memorial for Gwen Araujo down in Newark, they had her friends or school students or something wear those angel wing things so that the Phelps protesters would be hidden from the, the mourners. And they, that was one of the you know, lasting things that happened out of the Matthew Shepard tragedy was when Fred Phelps went to, to uh, picket that the, the memorial. Phelps, the Phelps people, by the way, showed up at the, um, uh, after the trial in Los Angeles, the Phelps people showed up at the Hall of Justice in San Francisco and had pictures of Diane Whipple in flame saying Diane Whipple is in hell with the devil. I mean, a woman they never met. Um, I, I want to pick up on a point Cynthia made, and, and you asked about the mainstream media. I, I've been a prosecutor most of my career. I'm a lawyer in recovery now. <laughs> but I, I spent about two years full-time covering sensational trials, the Michael Jackson trial, the Scott Peterson trial, and even a little bit of Britney Spears. Um, and because I know cable and how that end of it works, the only time a, a, a gay story is going to burst through into the mainstream media is if someone's beautiful, mm -hmm. like Matthew was beautiful in his life and Diane was beautiful in her life. Um, and, and to some degree, queer people have broken into the mainstream, but there's still a tremendous number of invisible gay people. And I think of, again, I'm not here to plug the, the BAR, local, one of our local gay newspapers, but you know, uh, I think of a recent murder in the last couple of years where an older man was killed uh, by a younger guy. He was left to rot in his bathtub for so long that his body began to liquefy in his own tub. Now, because he was an older guy, and probably a lot of his friends had died of AIDS, and his family, maybe he disowned him for all, and I'm just making up his narrative, nobody knew about him. And I'm not here to debate the criminal justice system, but his case was plea bargained, and his killer got out pretty quick. Now, that story never broke through into the mainstream media. There will never be a nightly news report about that. That will never appear in the San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, and I know mainstream papers are under financial stress uh, now to cover anything, but he lived in this, I, I suppose, ghettoized world of probably only had a limited number of friends, lived in the gay community, and his death went completely unnoticed. So the rest of the <clears throat> world could never say, hey, I disagree with this, or who was this man, or why did this happen? Because you won't even hear about it. So, but for the gay press, even today, gay people's lives uh, and deaths go completely unnoticed and, and pass without remark or observation unless they're beautiful and sensational. So I think maybe more than ever they're crucial. I just wanted to kind of jump off that and um, it's interesting to note that with all, you know, we're saturated with media these days and you, you can, and the internet, I mean just everywhere um, and even with that, you know, these stories um, aren't being told and, and I'm here, you know, I'm not gay, um, but I represent having written for, for the Associated Press, so sort of the mainstream media, and it's sort of like the, the you know, of the gay press is so needed, and, and that's um, the story that the Bay Area Reporter broke is what we took, and then it went national, and then Dan Rather picked, um, picked up that story. But it's kind of like, um, well, I think we did some good to, to share the news of you know, the no obits, but on the other hand, you feel like once, uh, once it was shared uh, throughout the country, then that solved, the, that solved the AIDS problem. Even though we were very clear in, in our article, just like Cynthia mentioned, you know, I remember talking to Mike Salinas, you know, very clearly, you know, this doesn't mean that AIDS is over. Um, it, it just was a snapshot in time, you know, for that one week, really. Um, so, you know, I think that uh, the mainstream media you know, likes the
the story is wrapped up nice and nice and tidy. And you know, I don't know. If, um, you know, obviously, like, uh, like Jim said, with um, cuts at newspapers and things like that, you wonder if you know. I I don't know. Are there any mainstream newspapers that have um, you know like a gay beat or that sort of thing? I, I don't know. Can I just one, one other quick mm -hmm. vignette? The, the Diane Whipple case. People say, why did it get big press? You know, it's the, I guess a weird confluence of facts. Before I prosecuted that case. I prosecuted a double murder of two black women, Gloria and Nadia Sheck Snyder, who rest in peace. Their boyfriend and the, 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 the and her, he killed his former girlfriend and her mother while they held his baby in their arms, shot him in the face. I spent four months in that trial. I put my soul into that. Flew to Los Angeles to try the dog mauling case where there were 20 cameras every day. We took a one day break to do the sentencing of a double murder of two beautiful black women not a single reporter showed up in the room. If they had, they would have asked you about the dog mauling case. Yeah. Yeah. One followed me and asked, and you see 20, 15 family members showed up, and, and you wonder, so it's not just gay folks, it's black folks and other people without power. You know, what, what does it lead them to believe about the justice system when the press doesn't paint? Is there, are those two lives less valuable? And so I'm sure the friends of this gentleman who was murdered in his bathtub like the Sheck Snyders believe, you know, on one level, I guess we're faceless, and then other black folks wonder, no one cares if we get killed. So I, I think the fact that these things are not covered in the mainstream media actually feeds the feeling of alienation and that the society doesn't care, and it, it's not just shared by, by gay people. Right, but the question for me is not about the mainstream media, because frankly, we don't, we don't need them. I don't know why we expect that they're going to be anything but what they are. They're, they're owned by corporations. I mean, they're all, you know, all owned by one individual or whatever. They're all being you know, consolidated into ownership by one or two people. We can't depend on the mainstream media. We never could. You know, back when I was with Gay Liberation, we weren't looking to, to, to the mainstream media as our salvation. The reality is we are our own salvation. We've got to mobilize. It's like Jim said. You know, we need, we, we need to be the liberation force again. We need to bring back the old spirit of gay liberation and queer nation and act up because that is what is going to change things, not depending on the straight media or Hollywood or any of those other forces or churches or family or whatever. We have to do it for ourselves. We did it at one time and we made it remarkable inroads. It was act up. It was act up that changed the way the epidemic was being directed in this country and the way people with AIDS were being treated. It was ACT UP. It was not the media. It was not the church. It was not any of these things. It was ACT UP. And what changed in 1969, what changed the way America looked at queers was gay liberation, who came after Stonewall. That's what changed things. We need to go back and start gay liberation all over again, or ACT UP or Queer Nation and forget the mainstream media or Hollywood. Well, I'll, I'll partly dissent on that because as Tommy knows and some people who know me know, I've had a foot in both worlds. I've, I've been both a, a gay media activist in the gay press and I've also been a broadcast person who's worked the broadcast beat in, in San Francisco, San Jose, Dallas, Houston. Um, I, back in 1973, I was one of a team of reporters for an ABC-owned uh, radio station, KAUM, that covered the Houston mass murder case, the, the death of 27 young men by, uh, by, a, a three, by three men from Houston. And at that time, the mainstream media didn't contextualize things as, quote, a queer murder. It wasn't considered a homosexual murder. A lot of us who were just coming out at that point were worried if it was considered queer, whether there would be a backlash in a place like Houston that was supposed to be part of the Bible Belt. But no, that wasn't the case at all. Uh, we were able to cover this, and really gay issues and, and homophobia and all these things really didn't come up. It was a context of social class in Houston. Most of the young men killed were, were the sons of families that had newly arrived to Houston. They were new, new to big cities. They were new to Texas big city life. They were in a part of the city that was stigmatized by class and by race. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Houston Police Department had ignored the complaints of families who were looking to find their kids that were missing. These, this went on for a long time until suddenly they discovered some bodies in a boat shed in Galveston. And all of a sudden they discovered 27 bodies. And unfortunately the joke at the time was once the Houston Police Department felt they had beaten the record of mass murders at that time, they, they quit looking for bodies. What, what I'm saying is, is that the zeitgeist of the time very much determines whether or not uh, queer murders are overlooked or...